Hello, and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm Monica Weitzel, and I'll be your host for a series of short interviews with community leaders about how they can help you make the best of this tough situation that we're all going through, the coronavirus pandemic. Instead of Metro East Studios, I'm talking to you from my home, and we'll talk with my guests remotely to keep us all safe. Today, I'm talking with neighborhood leader, Carol Rula. Thanks for joining me, Carol. Hi, Monica. Glad to be here. It's good to have you here. Now, Carol, I know you used to be the chair of the Coalition of Neighborhoods for the city of Gresham, and you've also been, and still are, I believe, the president of the Kelly Creek Neighborhood Association. Is that right? Well, I'm still the president of the Coalition of Gresham Neighborhood Association, and I'm actually, I do land use on the board of the Kelly Creek Neighborhood Association, but I do a lot of work on, uh, as a lead on nextdoor.com as well. Okay, well, I want to talk about that too. Tell me, um, having worked with neighborhood associations for so long, um, what kind of changes have you seen in the way that people are working together as a result of this pandemic? Well, I'm certainly seeing people really stepping up to help each other, to reach out, uh, to offer things. Um, people are a lot less argumentative. They all feel like we're in this together, which is a really great thing that we have you know, going as a neighborhood because that's what's going to get us to get, you know, through this together. I think you're probably right because uh, this is really tough for everybody and the social distancing has been very difficult for people to, to not be in touch with each other and not see each other and congregate. So uh, there are other ways for people to get together. What, what have you seen as far as, as people trying to connect with each other? Well, I think people are, you know, calling people, you know, each other more, checking in on neighbors, uh, neighbors who are older and really shouldn't be out. Uh, other neighbors are going to the grocery store for them, carefully leaving those supplies in a location where they're not, you know, contaminating each other. Um, and, and people are also, uh, you know, using Zoom a lot. Um, my kids have had two Zoom meetings and, and they've done gaming things and things like that with, with these uh, online uh, video systems that we're all getting used to now. <laughs> I think, I think uh, this technology is helping us. You know, the, I mean, whenever we had the last uh, situation like this, which was never quite this bad, we didn't have this kind of technology to connect everybody. So I think that's, that's really going to help. Now, one of the things you mentioned was uh, nextdoor.com. And Nextdoor has, is a wildly popular uh, site. And I actually first heard about it from you quite a few years ago. And so I've been very active on it in my own neighborhood. There, there's, it's a great way for neighbors to connect with each other. And now there is something called the help map. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, we have a lot of people uh, volunteering, you know, posting to next door saying, you know, I'm a person who uh, has, you know, low health uh, vulnerability. And so I'm willing to go out and do things for people or I'm glad to be a person to, to call people who need um, a check in. Uh, all kinds of things that people were offering within just posts on next door and people would reply and um next door the uh, you know the, the general next uh recognized this was happening so they put together what's called a help map and it allows people who have some way to help to be able to identify their house on the map of the neighborhood and say I can help and you can put in, you know, the ways you can help. People who need help don't get identified. They deliberately did that so that people would um, not reveal, you know, that they were vulnerable perhaps and for privacy. So it allows a person needing help to go there and look for help or say somebody knows somebody needs help and they're in communication with them. They can look at the map and say, hey, you have someone really close to you who might be able to help and, and help connect people um, because that, you know, what it's all about is, is uh, working together as neighbors. That's right. That's right. I think it's a great idea. I know, um, I'm not sure if we have a way to bring up the help map that was um, from my neighborhood, but it kind of shows where the people are. So you can look at the map and there's yeah. dots there that will show actually, you know, all the people in your neighborhood that are willing to help which is really great, it's really great. And then you can click on them, right? And people will, it'll say, 
I am willing to run an errand for you. I'll pick up your prescriptions. I'll go to the grocery store for you. I'll, I'll just check in with you or call you or whatever, whatever it is that people need. I'll mow your lawn, you know, whatever people, whatever people need. Yeah, that's right. And they've also expanded it to show uh, neighbors in your nearby neighborhood as well, not showing where they live for privacy, but then it just lists people. So if you don't have many people in your neighborhood who could help, you have the possibility to look at neighbors nearby in a nearby neighborhood as well. Great. That's great. I think that's a really, a really good service. We're just about out of time here, Carol. I really appreciate you sharing with us what the neighbors are doing and how people are connecting with each other and also about nextdoor.com and the help map. So thank you for all the work that you've done and uh, let's just keep on going through this, this rough time and we'll make it through. Thanks, Monica. Glad to be here. Thank you. And thanks for watching Community Hotline at Home. We have more interviews coming up soon, so watch for them on Metro East channels and on your favorite social media sites. I'm Monica Weitzel. Stay safe.